If someone asks me to define horror, I will not be able to point to a definition and say, this is horror. This is because horror is a lot more complicated than cannibals, monsters and ghosts. If you have read the works of authors such as H.P. Lovecraft and Junji Ito, you are probably familiar with what I am talking about. As an example, in many of Junji Ito's stories, the horror does not come from the monster or the anomaly itself. Instead, the horror arises from the bizarre, unpredictable effects these surreal entities force upon their unsuspecting victims. So today, let's talk about a story that is unsettlingly impressive. Invasion of the Body Snatchers is a movie that rebooted three times. But for the sake of sanity, I'm only going to talk about the 1978 movie. Now you might ask me, why are you reviewing a movie that is like five decades old? Why not review something new? The truth is, I watched this movie recently for the first time and I felt like this movie deserves a lot more credit than it has garnered. With a cast of amazing actors and a concept truly impressive, they illustrated a story that is unsettling and bizarre. As a sad man who lives a meaningless existence, it helped me to forget about my insecurities for a moment. If you haven't watched the movies, please watch it because this video will contain spoilers. Probably. Okay, so the movie starts with a bunch of gooey, slimy stuff landing on Earth and trying to adapt to the Earth's environment. And as the story progresses, we are made aware of how this entity operates and the true nature of this incomprehensible horror. Now I hate to shove Lovecraft into everything. Oh, who am I kidding? I love Lovecraft. Lovecraft wrote about monsters and entities that are so far beyond our understanding that even he had a hard time conveying these horrors into words. But this movie perfectly created a, a compelling story that radiates with nihilistic cosmic dread. Because even at the end of the movie, we are but left with only a minuscule amount of information on this unspeakable entity. That is the perfect way to write a being of this nature. Now let's talk about my favorite scene in the movie, Matthew Burnell who is the protagonist of this surreal tale of madness discovers. What is that? A caper. No, it's a rat turd. A what? A rat turd. Now pay close attention to this scene once more. What is that? A caper. No, it's a rat turd. A what? A rat turd. This is what we call foreshadowing. The scene symbolizes what is to come, but most importantly, it begs the question, what is a bit of rodent feces in a dish of a restaurant? At face value, one might call me insane for paying this much attention to the excretions of a mammal. But the fact that this piece of shit is confused with a spice is truly a dilemma unlike any other. This spine-chilling conclusion parallels how people are tricked by the pod people. Although similar in attributes they may be, a rat turd is not a spice. This is the moral lesson of this magnificent story. Now before I end this video, I am going to talk about my second favorite scene in this movie. After failing to save his friends, Matthew Burnell discreetly wanders the streets of the now horror infested city and on his way to the White House, he is spotted by one of his friends who has managed to survive and she recognizes and calls out to him, happy to find her lost friend. This scene to this day is one of the most spine-chilling twists I have ever seen such a nihilistic and horrifying ending where the incomprehensible hive has conquered the grain of dust we call home. And I mean I have seen an innumerable number of horror movies but this ending was one that surprised me and made me gasp 
with confused satisfaction.